Hello everyone and welcome to lesson seven in this chess beginner to winner series in which we take you from absolute chess beginner to winning your first tournament games and beyond. And today we will be covering chess opening principles. So uh, in the last few lessons you may have learned you know, how to set up the board uh, how to checkmate, the difference between checkmate and stalemate, and so on. Uh, but as you've played some games, uh, hopefully with friends or on the computer, you might be wondering, well, what should I do in the beginning? Uh, you know, how should I start a chess game? Uh, you know, should I memorize all these chess openings out there? Uh, and all of that can be confusing. So what I would recommend is to learn just general chess opening principles. Uh, I wouldn't try and memorize a bunch of lines, but remember, uh, you should always be having fun in chess because uh, if it's not fun, then you're less likely to play or study chess. So uh, I would recommend following these principles. So as white, when you're deciding what first move to make, usually the best moves are either e4 for your first move or d4. Uh, those are two good moves to start with. Now the difference between the two is that e4 pawn moves, so e4, uh, usually lead to more open and tactical games. Uh, and so I'll show you a quick example. So uh, usually with e4 moves, the game will continue maybe with e5. Uh, and then you want to bring your knights out first because they're a little slower. So you could attack this pawn. Uh, then your opponent may likely defend. Uh, and then you could immediately bring out the d4 pawn. So you're trying to place both of your pawns in the center here and control a lot of central space. And if your opponent does that, usually you want to stop them. So you could capture here, uh, and then you would most likely recapture to keep the material even. Uh, and, you know, black could just continue development, but, you know, say your opponent is also a beginner and he captures and then you capture. Uh, well, right now we see already that the center is kind of open. Pieces have been traded already and it's just in the very beginning of the game. Uh, so if I go back to the beginning, uh, we see how the E4, E5 opening uh, can end up kind of opening up the center of the board and giving your pieces plenty of room to maneuver and more tactics and attacking opportunities are available. Now, if we take a quick look at d4, uh, a lot of times d5 would be the response. Uh, well, here you can play different things. Um, you could play this move, c4, called the queen's gambit. And this looks like you're giving up a piece but usually your opponent won't take that piece. Uh, he'll maybe defend here. And then uh, you could bring this up. Maybe they go here. Uh, you could try something like this. And both sides would just start developing pieces. Uh, and I don't know, it may end up something like this. But what you notice is that the center of the board is kind of blocked up more by the pawns and the pieces may end up having to maneuver around this closed up center here. And the game will be more uh, strategic. It'll be a little bit slower. So back to the beginning, general principles for the opening. First, you wanna decide what move to make. Either e4 or d4 is what I would recommend if you're a beginner. Uh, and then, you know, just pick one of those. e4 if you like to attack, if you like more tactics. Uh, d4 if you like things to be more uh, strategic and slower and more solid. And, 
you know, a less crazy game. So e4 or d4, the goal behind this move is to control the center. So that is a very important, uh, just general opening principle. Try to control the center. And the way you do that is putting pieces in the center, uh, but more importantly, placing your pieces where they can attack the center. So this pawn jumps into the center, but it's attacking this d5 square. So the opponent plays e5, doing the same thing, jumping in the center, trying to control the center and attacking the d4 square. So opening principle number one would be just to control the center. And why do you want to do that? Uh, well, because in the center, you can more easily move to other areas of the board. And if you control the center, your pieces will have uh, a clearer path into the center. And then you can move them from there to pretty much anywhere else on the board. Uh, whereas if all your pieces were over on the queen side of the board or over on the king side of the board, uh, and then a bunch of action started to happen all the way across the board, uh, it may be harder and take longer to reach that part of the board. But if you're controlling the center, and a lot of your pieces are already in the center, then they can more easily and more quickly get to where they need to go elsewhere on the board. So just remember, always try and control the center, not only in the opening, but throughout the rest of the game as well. So another general uh, chess opening principle is to develop your pieces off the back rank as fast as you can. Now, when I say pieces, I mean uh, everything except the king. Uh, the king, you want to get castled as quickly as possible. So that's another general opening principle. And if you learn uh, opening principles, then you can just follow those and it'll help you a lot uh, to avoid mistakes and you won't have to memorize a bunch of openings. And if you get stuck in an opening that you're unfamiliar with, you can just uh, try and follow these general principles and it'll help you uh, avoid accidents. So control the center, get your pieces off the back rank as fast as possible uh, because once you get them moving into the middle of the board, they're more powerful and they're able to do more there. So generally you wanna move knights before the bishops because the knights are slower and take longer to move. So a good second move here would be knight to f3, attacking this pawn, uh, attacking squares in the center. And if you have a choice between moving the knight to h3, to e2 or f3, usually f3 is better uh, because it's more towards the center of the board and the knight can control more squares and import, more importantly, more central squares from f3. Uh, so the opponent would generally uh, play the same thing, developing a knight towards the center. Uh, well, here in the first game, we played d4 uh, which is possible. Uh, another option could be uh, bishop to c4, which here we see that a bishop has developed before the other knight, uh, but that's okay here uh, because this bishop is attacking the center. Uh, it also attacks this possibly weak f7 square, uh, which is only protected by the opponent's king. And also very important, now you're ready to castle to the king side. And a general opening principle is to uh, get your king castled to safety as quickly as possible. So uh, on your next move, you can castle to the king side. So here, let's say the opponent uh, just brings their bishop out as well. And now they're ready to move their knight and castle also. So you could go ahead and castle here. And why is it important to castle quickly uh, and you know, get your king to safety as fast as possible? And somebody might think, well, you know, what if my king gets trapped in the corner? Well, if you look at this, 
The king, once it moves from the center to this kingside castled position, it has three pawns in front of it, creating a wall of protection. It also has a knight here helping to protect the king. Uh, and this rook, which was not doing much here in the corner, is now moved towards the center of the board, uh, where it could either stay here and help push this F pawn uh, in some openings, uh, but more likely it would move here to E1 and help guard this E pawn and maybe help push that pawn forward if possible uh, later in the game. And you could line the rook up on your opponent's king up here on E8, uh, causing him problems if he doesn't castle quick enough. So the game may continue uh, with knight developing, you know, and then maybe you develop your knight to protect this pawn. Now your opponent could go ahead and castle. Uh, and then, you know, maybe you just move this pawn up and now your bishop's ready to come out. Uh, the same could be done uh, possibly here. Um, let's see. You know, there are different options, but this is just an example. So let's say this happens. Uh, now it could get dangerous here with a pin uh, on the knight here. And I'll talk about pins later uh, in another lesson, but a pin is basically where you uh, attack a piece and you generally do not want to move that piece because there's a more valuable piece behind it. So this knight is kind of pinned to the queen here. If it moves, this less valuable bishop would be able to capture a more valuable queen. So development here, uh, let's say that immediately you attack. Now the bishop has to decide what to do. If you capture, uh, well, this would help bring the queen out more quickly. But now white may, able, may be able to attack the queen uh, and this pawn. So the queen would probably have to retreat back. And now white would have time to develop his queen. So maybe he would go here. Uh, and now, you know, possibly this could be brought out. Uh, this could be brought out. Now the bishop uh, could move out. The other rook, um, you know, this rook. Uh, so this gives you an idea of how the pieces might develop. Uh, they castle their king to safety. They bring their rooks out towards the center of the board and put their other pieces up here towards the center of the board. So general opening uh, principles in chess. Control the center of the board. Uh, get your pieces off the back row as fast as you can and into the action. Uh, castle your king as quick as possible to get it to safety uh, because when the king is castled now, especially here on the king side or even on the queen side, they can only be attacked from two different directions, head on, you know, directly in front of the king or from the side over here in the center. So the white king could be attacked uh, like from this bishop here on the left down towards the king's side, or if something was here in front of the king, but nothing can come from off the board on the right side here. But if you left your king in the middle, he could be attacked from head on uh, or the right or the left. So three different angles of attack. But once you castle, there are only two angles of attack, straight on, or from the left here uh, when you're talking about kingside castling. So uh, just keep that in mind. Control the center, develop your pieces as fast as you can, uh, get your king castle to safety. And another general opening principle is not to move the same pieces twice in the opening unless you have a good reason to do so. So let's take a look at what could happen if you ignore that. Let's say white goes here and uh, maybe black does the same. But now white just starts developing all his pieces uh, and maybe black thinks, well, I'm just gonna try and 
bring my queen up here and line up and maybe get an attack on this uh, weak f2 square at some point in the game. Uh, and white just kind of ignores that and continues to develop pieces. And black continues with this plan lining up here. Uh, but now he realizes he can't attack that because the knight's in the way. And white just, uh, maybe he goes ahead and develops. And now the queen thinks, oh, well, I can't attack by moving down here to h4 because the knight would just take me. So he starts moving his queen again. And he moves over here and attacks with the queen and bishop. But now white just continues with his development. He goes ahead and castles. And now black realizes, oh, great. Well, now I can't even take that because now the king and the rook are covering it. So maybe he thinks, well, I'll go down here and attack his bishop. And white just moves this pawn here. And now he has room to develop here. And so now, finally, black thinks, oh, well, you know, maybe I should go ahead and move another piece. And so uh, he's not sure what to do. And he thinks, oh, I'll attack this bishop. So he just moves a pawn. Uh, but now white attacks the queen again. And so the queen has to find somewhere to move and... Uh, decides to go, oh, I don't know, over here somewhere. Well, now we have, uh, let's see. Instead of moving this bishop up here, and normally you would want to just keep developing all your pieces, uh, we might have something different like, I uh, take that back. We'll go ahead and just develop the bishop. So we didn't want to bring it up here or it could be captured. And now black thinks, oh, well, I better move this and try and get my other bishop out. But then we have this problem here. Uh, and now this is a fork attacking two pieces at the same time. So the queen would have to move and then the bishop could capture and the queen would probably just recapture uh, and white at this point has four pieces developed and now black just has one queen developed and white is also ahead in material so before this drags on too long the point I'm trying to make is if you develop your pieces try not to move the same pieces over and over again because if you waste time moving a piece more than once that you don't have to uh, your opponent could develop two or even three pieces while you're moving that one piece all around the board and then with all that extra firepower out on the board it could cause you problems like we saw here where the knight and the bishop everything is uh and these pawns they're controlling a lot of squares uh and the opponent's pieces kind of got trapped here especially when the pawns started attacking and were able to fork the bishop and the queen and so you can create an advantage for yourself by trying to just get all your pieces out and developed off the back rank as fast as you can into the center and if you can get more of your pieces out faster than your opponent uh, you can likely turn that into some type of a, an advantage in the middle of the game. All right, well, let's see if there's anything else I should cover here. Um, we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, another strategy or general opening principle is to try and put two pawns in the center. So anytime that you can... Uh, you know, push one pawn out and if your opponent stops you like in this game you don't want to put the other pawn out immediately because then he could capture you capture and now he develops a piece but attacks your queen and you have to waste time moving this queen somewhere maybe you move it over here and this could give your opponent time to develop another piece so he 
kind of made you waste time uh, to his advantage. While you're running away with this piece and moving it a second time, he's able to bring out a second piece here. So that's something you want to avoid. But if we go back to the beginning and you go here and they move something maybe like this and they're not attacking the other central square, then most of the time you want to bring your other pawn out because now you have two pawns controlling the center here. And if they really ignored you and did something like this, where you could bring all three pawns out, well then this is usually pretty good also. Uh, because now, let's say they attack, you can bring the knight up here to protect. Uh, maybe they go here. Um, you could move maybe your queen here to protect this, although he could capture this and then attack this pawn. So that's something you would have to watch out for too. Uh, instead, you may want to uh, maybe pin this knight to the queen here so the knight can't move or you get the queen. Uh, and now, you know, if your opponent attacked and you captured and they thought, oh, I can grab this, well, then you could pick off their queen with the bishop. But uh, just to go back to the point here, if you are able to put two pawns in the center on the D and E squares, E4 and D4, that's generally a good idea to do that. And if they let you bring uh, another one up here on C4, that's pretty good as well. But I wouldn't get too carried away. Uh, you could try, if they do something like this, you could maybe try and bring another pawn up but the problem by pushing all your pawns uh, before you get pieces out is that uh, they could become targets because they're not protected by anything yet. So, you know, except maybe the queen is protecting here. And you definitely need to get your pieces out quickly in the opening to help attack and defend your position at the same time. So... Uh, back to the beginning here. Anytime you can bring your E or D pawn out, if your opponent ignores it and does not try to stop you from bringing the other pawn out, and they do, uh, I don't know, something like this, and then you're able to uh, bring out the other pawn, that's usually a good idea to do that. And then if they continue to ignore you with something like that, or you know, maybe this, uh, you could even bring out three pawns. But at this point, uh, you probably want to start bringing out your pieces. Let's say they attack here. Um, I don't know. Right now it's protected by the queen. So, oh, excuse me. Now is a good time to just start developing pieces here. Um, and uh, if I go back and recap... Uh, control the center of the board. Develop your pieces off the back rank as fast as possible. Try not to move them more than once. Castle your king to safety as quick as possible. Uh, and then, you know, try and put two or even three pawns in the center. But watch out uh, for pushing this F pawn because that can lead to uh, possible attacks here on your king. Uh, especially, I think I covered it in one of the openings uh, where white, you know, push this F pawn and then if black makes space for the queen to come out, you have to watch out that you don't push the other pawn because then there could be a checkmate here with the queen attacking the king. So be careful of pushing this F pawn. And in general, you want to push the central pawns, uh, not the pawns on the side of the board, uh, because they're not influencing the center, and it's very important to control the center. All right. Uh, make sure there's nothing else that we should cover in the opening. Uh, bring out your E or your D pawn. If they let you bring both pawns out, 
you know, bring both of the pawns out. Uh, you know, if they try something like this, you can bring both of them out. But then you may want to try and get your pieces out as fast as possible and look to see what your opponent's attacking. Uh, a good opening principle is to try and make moves that accomplish more than one thing. So this move here, it attacks the center, controlling good central squares. Uh, it develops a piece quickly off the back row. And one of your pieces was under attack, so it helps defend that piece. Uh, so maybe your opponent goes here, and then you develop a bishop to pin this piece, and maybe he blocks it. Uh, and then you could push forward and attack. Now, generally you don't want to move pawns or pieces twice in the opening unless that uh, you have a good reason. And here the good reason is to push this pawn forward to gain space in the center. Uh, then you're also attacking, forcing this knight uh, to retreat away. And now you can give up your bad bishop, which would be blocked by these pawns that are on the same color as this bishop. You're able to trade it off for black's good bishop, which was on the opposite colored squares as his central pawns. So he would have to capture with the queen. Uh, and then you could possibly even push forward here, uh, but that would probably be a waste of time. Um, let's see, or would it? By pushing forward, you could threaten a fork of the king and the rook here, and then the queen would have to do something about this. He would have to either retreat back, and then he could chase your knight away with this pawn here, uh, or you could try to attack here, uh, but you know the pawn could attack you. Uh, I don't know. It would be pretty tricky. So. These are the kind of things you have to figure out by experimenting in your own games. Uh, but before I end this video, we'll do a recap of everything. All right, decide whether you want the e4 pawn, which is more strategic, or excuse me, more tactical, because the center usually breaks open and allows the pieces to move all over the board and attack more often, uh, or do you want to play the d4 pawn, which usually leads to more strategic and maneuvering games? Uh, but whatever you pick, if you play one of the pawns and your opponent ignores you and allows you to bring both of the pawns out, that's usually a good idea because you're controlling the center. And that's a very important uh, opening principle, but also an all around good chess principle is to control the center. Uh, and then uh, if we play forward here, uh, now you want to, uh, well, let's go back. Let's say e4, e5. You want to develop the knights before the bishops because they're slower. Uh, but once you get one of your bishops, or excuse me, one of your knights developed, you could develop the uh, bishop next, like you could go here. Uh, which would let you castle quickly. Another general opening principle, get that king castled uh, as fast as you can. Let's say the opponent goes here. Now you're castled to safety and your rook is ready to get into the action. So control the center. Try and push uh, central pawns out and help uh, control the center with those pawns. Bring your knights out quickly because they're a little slower than the bishops and it gives you time to see where exactly you want to place your bishops. Get your pieces off the back row as fast as possible. Uh, get your king castle to safety. Uh, and also, as you move your pieces and develop here, we see uh, the back row clears out and it lets the rooks connect like this. And when the rooks are connected, they can reinforce each other and it gives them more room to maneuver around. And they're usually going to want to go behind pawns that have been pushed forward already. Uh, or to areas where you have no pawn, 
uh, or you or your opponent have no pawn and then it would be a completely open file and then not only would they have space to move left or right but also up and down the board as well okay well that's about all that i'm going to go uh, over in this video today so basic uh, general chess opening principles uh, control the center put your pawns in the center uh, move your pieces out as fast as you can get your king castle to safely uh, castled to safety as fast as you can uh, also try and move your pieces uh, out towards the center and don't move them more than once in the opening unless you have a good reason you know if you have to recapture something that was captured of yours um, and try to move your pieces to squares that do more than one thing like so this knight for example controls the center uh, you developed a piece off the back row to help you castle more quickly uh, it's attacking a pawn uh, this bishop here, it moved outside of the pawn chain here, uh, so it wouldn't be blocked in by its own pawns. And it's aimed at the king side down here, attacking towards the king, and it's covering the center. So, give your pieces good squares uh, with multiple ideas uh, behind moving them to those squares. And... Uh, if you follow these principles, you should be uh, well on your way to a good start, at least, in most of your chess games. And you won't have to try and memorize a bunch of opening moves. Uh, that you should save until you, uh, you know, start really improving and moving up to uh, maybe a, a more intermediate level. Uh, but if you like studying openings and it's fun for you, you know, then go ahead and check some out. All right, everybody. Well, if you haven't uh, liked or subscribed yet, uh, please go ahead and do that. And also feel free uh, to leave comments or suggestions uh, and any requests for things that you would like to see in the future. Um, and I'll try to get to those. Uh, the holidays may slow me down a little bit. Uh, but I'll at least try and get uh, some videos out regularly. Uh, and uh, something that I want to cover in the future that's very important for beginners are uh, tactics. So if you study one thing as a beginner uh, at, and really go over, uh, that would be tactics because most beginners lose their games because of an overlooked tactic. And if you're not sure what I mean by tactics, uh, I'll try to start covering different tactics in my uh, future videos. So thank you, everybody, and have a super chess day.